All right. Live on the line, none other than the legend himself, Joe Batan. How are you, Joe? Hey, hey, man, I love your music. Everybody's digging you. Everybody's digging your stuff, man. You're so talented, dude. I I appreciate you. It's an honor to have you on the line. My pleasure. My pleasure. So, so what have you been up to, man? Well, I've been pretty busy. I just finished um, writing my uh, autobiography. It's called Streetology. So we're looking for a, a publisher. Um, that's one of the things. And, of course, I'm starting to get some material to do a new album. Okay. And I'm getting ready to come out in California to be at Stephen's Steakhouse on March 23rd and the 24th. So everybody everybody that's listening, you got to go to, is, is it Caesar's Steakhouse? No, Stephen's. Steven Steakhouse. I see that's St Steven and Caesar are, are a big, big difference, man. So go to Steven Steakhouse, March now, what, March twenty third and twenty fourth. That's in Commerce, California. You got to see Joe, man. He's he's uh. Right, so who else is on that gig? Well, you got Ray Carrion and the All Stars. Uh, I think he has a host of people. He has some comedians, and what they're doing is we're having a tribute to uh, my my late brother by another mother ralphie pagan oh man uh, ralphie yeah ralphie so we're gonna do a thing for him and uh long overdue for that brother because he loved la rata oh and, yeah uh, you know speaking you know, of, we just gotta, speak, mm -hmm. speaking of that you and you and ralphie you worked together on uh, numerous things right oh we we were two new york boys that that grew up in new york and decided we wanted to come to hollywood and of course, Rafi came out here, and he never came back. He loved <laughs> it out here. Yeah, and, man. Uh, I was back and forth with him, and we did a lot of uh, gigs together at the old Gold Coast, the Pasta House back then, Virginia's. These clubs that that existed at that time, you know. Now, now, um, you come from Spanish Harlem, right? Like you, you grew up in Spanish Harlem. That's right, El Barrio, in New York. That's Correct. And you have you have such an uh, a diverse culture. You're you're Filipino, right? Right. And your my father's Filipino. My mother's African American, but my heart is Latino. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And and that's what I was gonna say. Like you, you um somehow you managed to to gravitate towards the Latino culture. And I swear, if if I didn't see your picture, I swear you you you'd be one hundred percent Latino. But um. <laughs> I am pretty much, you know, I mean, look, uh, I'm involved in so many different cultures. Um, it, 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 it's, it's my moniker that um, I wanted my music to go around to the world. And I wanted you to be enjoyed by different cultures around the world. So it didn't really matter if I was Filipino or black. I mean, people should just be honored that I engulfed myself in their culture and, and I enjoyed um their customs and I wanted to do their music, you know. So out of that erupted Joe Batan in my own style. Now, um, when you um, when you got involved in music, I'm sure you toured a lot of different places. Did you notice that, um, like at some of these concerts and some of these car shows, that even the ages, like your music, has transitioned to all kinds of different age groups. Like young people are listening <laughs> to your music. That's true, you know, it's so funny. Uh, there was a, a brief period in my life where I was working. I went back to work. I needed a job. I stopped playing music. And uh, I totally really gave it up. You know, I wasn't going to play anymore. And then uh, a gentleman stopped me in a record store and they said, hey, they're looking for you in California. You know, <laughs> and they want to know how much you charge. And you go out. I said, ah, they're probably not looking for me. Probably somebody else. <laughs> and lo and behold, they kept searching for me. And it was a guy named Alan Beck. Oh, wow. And uh, he wanted me to come out to a concert. And what it was, and how he explained it to me, he says, you know, you're pretty much an underground legend out here because people have never seen you. Uh, and those that have seen you, uh, just figured you weren't around anymore, that you must have passed away, you know, because they associated me with Ralphie because Ralphie had died at an early age. Uh, what, what year did Ralph? Died. What year did Ralphie pass away? Oh boy, I think it was. Gee, I don't want to give the wrong date. I should know that. Uh, approximately. It, it, I, it, was a, 
Let's see, 79, he called me and asked me to go to Columbia with him. And, and I said I was busy. I was going to Europe. So it had to be around uh, 79, 80. Okay. There. Yeah, somewhere like that. I'm not, don't hold me to it. No, I, won't, I, I won't hold you to it, man. I won't hold you. But okay. you know what? I got a surprise for you. Actually, somebody from New York who um, I don't know if you remember him. He's on the line as well, and he's he's he knows Ralphie, and you might remember him. His name is Victor Mendez. Say hi, Victor. Uh, this, hey, this, hey, Victor. How you doing? Uh, this is Joe Batang. Yes, you do. <laughs> uh,